Hi everyone, we are going to take the next few minutes and talk through central line placement. Let's start by reviewing the basics of central lines. A central line is a catheter whose tip ends centrally, which means the tip of the line terminates in the SVC, the IVC, or the cable atrial junction. There are many different types of central lines, some of which are listed here. For this video, we are going to review how to place a triple lumen central venous catheter, which is a very common catheter placed in the emergency department. The overall technique for placing each of these is the same. So first, when do we place central lines? Central lines are placed in many different clinical scenarios. A common scenario is a patient that's in shock who needs a large amount of blood or fluid resuscitation. Some medications can only be administered via central axis, such as vasopressors. In certain clinical scenarios, a peripheral IV is unable to be placed and a central line may be needed for access. Central lines can be placed in one of three locations, the subclavian vein, the internal jugular vein, or the femoral vein. In this video, we'll be placing the central line in the internal jugular as this is the most common location. Now we're going to transition to the actual placement of a central line, and remember, we are referring to a triple lumen central venous catheter that we are placing in the internal jugular vein. The first step is to gather your equipment, most of which you can see here in this image. You will need a CVC kit, a line insertion tray, as well as a sterile ultrasound probe cover. Not pictured is your ultrasound machine and your sterile gloves, gown, hair net. As remember, this is a completely sterile procedure. Once your equipment is gathered, you will open everything up, remembering to maintain a sterile field. First, we open up our line insertion tray. We have to be careful not to touch the inside portion as we are not sterile yet. Next, we will drop both our ultrasound probe cover and our CVC kit into our sterile field as demonstrated in the video. Next, we want to look at our patient's anatomy and find the best location for our central line to be placed. We will start by using the linear probe and scanning up and down the neck looking for the internal jugular vein and the carotid artery. Here is an example of what you might see as you scan up and down the neck. You can see the carotid artery on screen left and the internal jugular vein on screen right. Remember, we want our central line to be in the vein and not the artery. We can confirm where the vein is by using light compression and observing which vessel collapses. This indicates which vessel is the vein. This is also a good time to find the best spot on the neck to ultimately insert our needle. Usually we want to choose the location where the internal jugular is the largest and also the furthest away from the carotid artery. For example, we will not want to place our catheter where the vein is directly on top of the carotid artery. This would be a good example of what this might look like. Many patients who need central lines will be sick and in shock, so they may likely be volume down and have very collapsible veins. One way to make the internal jugular vein bigger or more plump would be to place your patient into the Nellenberg with their head below their feet to push more blood volume towards the head. Now that we have the patient positioned and we have found the best location for our central line to be placed, you will now put on your gloves, gown, and hairnet using proper sterile technique. You will also now place a sterile drape found in your line insertion tray on the patient and place your sterile ultrasound probe cover. Next, you will prepare all of your equipment. This is performed slightly differently depending on operator preference, but we find the easiest way to prepare yourself for success is to lay out all of your equipment in the order that it will be used. This is also the time to flush your CVC, flushing all three ports and leaving the brown port open. That's the brown port indicated by the arrow. Now you're ready to go ahead and get started with the procedure. 
Step one is to inject lidocaine into the area of skin you will be performing the procedure. This should be done under ultrasound guidance for safety and so that you know that you are providing adequate analgesia in the correct location. Now you will insert the introducer needle into the skin and use ultrasound guidance to place the needle tip into the internal jugular vein. Here is an example of advancing your needle into the internal jugular vein, which is the center of the image seen on the screen on this ultrasound image. The entire time you are advancing your needle, you are drawing back on the syringe. Here we can see the needle progressing as it is going on top of the vein and then progressively into the vein. Now you can see the needle that is centered in the center of the internal jugular vein. Once you visualize the needle in the center of the IJ, you should also get a flash of dark red venous blood in your syringe. In our mannequin model, venous blood is the color blue as seen here. Once you're in the IJ and have gut blood return in your syringe, gently place the ultrasound probe down and use the hand that was holding the ultrasound probe to grab the needle where it connects to the syringe and carefully untwist the syringe from the needle. Take great care to keep the needle perfectly in place as it is easy in this step to accidentally move the needle deeper or more superficial and lose your spot in the IJ. Next, you're going to take your guide wire and pass it through the needle as you can see in the video here. Once your guide wire is about 20 centimeters deep, as indicated by two black tick marks on the wire, you can now remove the needle as seen here. Remember, never let go of your guide wire. One hand should always be holding the guide wire at all times as it is free floating in the patient's vasculature and you do not want to lose sight of it. This can be difficult and somewhat awkward as the guide wire that is hanging out from the skin is very long. Above is an example of how to hold the guide wire so that you can maintain a sterile field while also keeping a hand on the wire. This entire technique of using an introducer needle and then a guide wire is called the Seldinger technique. This is used in many other procedures in emergency medicine, such as arterial lines and pigtail chest tubes. This wire is now essentially a placeholder that will guide your CVC into the correct location aka the internal jugular in this case. At this point, you want to confirm again with ultrasound that your guide wire is in the IJ and not the carotid artery. You do this by looking at both the short and the long axis. In the image shown here, you can see that the guide wire is in the center of the lumen of the IJ, as shown in the short axis. This image shows the wire in the IJ in the long axis. Ideally, you want to see that both the IJ and the carotid artery on the ultrasound image to show that the wire is in the IJ and not the artery. If you have difficulty confirming that the guide wire is in the vein and not the artery, you can use this clear tubing that is in each of the central venous catheter kits. One end attaches to your needle and the other end you'll hold up in the air as you can see here. If the needle tip is in the artery, you will see pulsating blood filling the tubing set. In order to get the central venous catheter through the skin and subcutaneous tissue, you must now dilate the skin. This is done by making a nick in the skin by using a scalpel. Hold the sharp portion away from the guide wire and then make a nick in the skin. Subsequently, place the blue dilator over the guide wire and into the subcutaneous skin. In terms of how deep to dilate, usually answering the skin until about half of the dilators remaining is adequate. The dilator is then removed and carefully the guide wire is kept in place at all times. Now you are ready to place your CVC over your wire and into the internal jugular. Remember earlier during our setup that we kept the brown port open. Your guide wire will exit from the brown port and you will continue holding it from there as you guide the central line through the skin and into place.
The depth that you insert the center line depends on the location. Once your center line is placed at the correct depth, you will then remove the guide wire completely. Using sterile flushes, you will flush and draw back for blood return on all three ports. Finally, you will secure the line in place using suture and sterile dressing and order your post-procedure chest x-ray. As you can see in the image here, if you're placing the line in the right IJ, you should put it to a depth of 15 centimeters, for the left IJ 18, for the left subclavian 17, and for the right subclavian 14. The post-procedure chest x-ray will look something like this. You can see the tip of the catheter terminate in the SVC or the cavoatrial junction. If the catheter was accidentally placed in the artery, you would see it cross midline and be entering to the aorta of the patient's left side in the chest x-ray. Once you have confirmed correct placement with chest x-ray, your central line is now ready to be used. Thank you so much for listening.